Okay, guys, in this video lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about electrical conduction and how we can uh, get some solutions to conduct while others do not. So to do that, we need to know the term electrolyte. All right, so you maybe have heard of like the old-time Gatorade commercials. They talk about the essential electrolytes that they put in Gatorade. Well, it's true. Gatorade actually is fortified with essential electrolytes. So let's talk about what they are. Well, basically, the term electrolyte means that if you dissolve it in water, it's going to conduct electricity. Okay, now... The reason why Gatorade uses it is because the things that are electrolytes have a biological function also because those ions do help with ion transfer, osmosis, you know, sodium channels, potassium channels, that kind of stuff in solution. So it's good that your body gets replenished electrolytes when you're working out and sweating a lot. Okay. Now, we have three different levels of electrolytes. We have strong electrolytes. That means that they're going to completely ionize in water. Okay. So if you take them and you dissolve them in water, they're going to 100% break apart into their positive ions, into their negative ions, okay? When that happens, we get a real high conduction, okay? This was going to be for things like ionic compounds and strong acids and strong bases, okay? We also get things called weak electrolytes. Now, weak electrolytes, they're going to dissolve in water, but they're only going to partially ionize, okay? Now, we haven't talked a lot about this concept yet, but kind of go with me on this if you can, okay? So when you dissolve some ionic compounds in water, because of the nature of their crystal lattice, and usually it's an organic substance that has ions involved with it, uh, most commonly it happens with weak acids and bases. What we get is that some of them will split apart into their ions, like an ionic compound does, and some of them actually stay together. So it's a percentage in terms of what splits apart and what stays into groups that percentage doesn't get 100% ionization, meaning that they don't ionize as well, so then they don't conduct electricity as well, okay? So we call them weak electrolytes. They're going to be your weak acids and bases because they partially ionize in water. Now, our third one are things that are non-electrolytes, okay? They dissolve in water, but they do not split apart at all, okay? Those are our polar molecules, okay? So if you can recall, remember, polar molecules do dissolve in water, but they will not conduct electricity. Okay, so things like sugars and alcohols, they're going to dissolve in water, but they don't have a positive charge or a negative charge. They're not an ion or an ionic compound, so they will not conduct electricity in, in solution. Here's three images to kind of help us out. So if you're a strong electrolyte, you'll notice how every single dot in here is a plus or a minus separate. So you have full ionization in solution. Over here with our weak electrolyte, we have some of the things in solution are still hooked together, you see them hooked together, and some have ionized. So with equal concentration, these are going to have more ions in solution, these are going to only have less. So here, if you count them up, we've got what, three, six, nine, twelve different ions in solution, where over here, we only get four, okay? Well, with twelve ions in solution, this is going to conduct electricity better, because the more ions you have, the more conduction you get. Here, you have the same number of things dissolving, but only four of them ionized, so you only have four particles be conducting. So you're getting literally three times the conduction over here as you would over here, even though you have the same number of particles. We go over here, and now the two blue spheres, they dissolve in water. They're polar because they can dissolve, but none of them ionize, so we have a non-electrolyte here. Okay. So some take-homes from this idea. One, Nonpolar molecules don't even dissolve. Okay, so notice on this thing here, we're not talking about nonpolar at all here. Nonpolar doesn't even make the list, okay, because they don't dissolve in water. So do not associate electrolytes with nonpolar things. Keep them separate. Polars do dissolve, but they do not conduct. Okay, ionic compounds dissolve and conduct. Okay, so if you think about it, if I give you an unknown powder and say, what is this? Is it polar? Is it nonpolar or is it ionic? One simple test is to dissolve some in water. If it dissolves, it's not nonpolar because nonpolar wouldn't dissolve. If it dissolves and conducts electricity, now it has to be ionic because that's the only thing that can do that. If it dissolves but does not conduct electricity, now you have a polar molecule. Okay, so it's a really quick, easy test chemists can use to start to classify an unknown substance or maybe an unknown contaminant in a substance that they have. Okay, so let's go to a little um, demonstration for you guys. Okay, so if we slide over here, get this lined up for you here, and what you see in front of you is a light bulb. That light bulb is attached to 
power. And if we start off with something really basic, okay? So we're gonna start off with just plain old distilled water, okay? Distilled water, water's a polar molecule, and if we put distilled water in the bulb, nothing happens. Now that's weird for most people because usually people think, hey, you put water into electricity, it's gonna conduct, it's super dangerous, don't ever wanna be wet when you're t plugging other things in. The reason why we say that is because we're not usually dealing with distilled water or pure water, we're usually dealing with tap water, okay? Tap water has ions in it, okay? So tap water, if you put that into solution, you can see that the bulb lights up. Now, it doesn't light up very strongly, okay? But we do see kind of that orange glow going on here, so we get some conduction. So tap water does conduct electricity because of the ions in solution. Distilled water does not, okay? Now, let's test some other things as we kind of go through here. So this container, I call it a cleaner. This is just distilled water, but I'm going to use this to kind of rinse off the electrodes to make sure that they don't get contaminated as I do this. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to three different solutions. I have a 5% acetic acid solution. I have a 5% sugar solution. And I have a 5% salt solution. The reason why they're all 5% is because I want them to have the same concentration, okay? So the same molarity, essentially, is what we're talking about here. Because I don't want the concentration to throw off on my results here, okay? So let's take the first one. Let's take the acetic acid, okay? Take the acetic acid, it's at 5%. I slide it in, and sure enough, we get some conduction, okay? It is an acid. Acids are ionic, but acetic acid is a weak acid. So this is really considered a weak electrolyte in terms of how much it conducts. Now let's compare that to a strong electrolyte and what a strong electrolyte would do for us. Okay, so I'll clean up my solution to get that all off. And now let's go to 5% sodium chloride. Okay, sodium chloride is a very common, strong ionic compound. It will 100% ionize in solution. So 5% sodium chloride, whoa, okay? So we see the big difference here with this 5% sodium chloride really dissolves, really, you know, really bright, lots of conduction here, okay? Now let's bring it back to the other side, okay? So that was an example of a strong electrolyte. Now notice how my cleaning solution is even starting to uh, conduct a little bit because those ions are left over on the electrodes. So I'm going to have to swap out my cleaning solution here. So I'll just get some more distilled water. And we want to keep doing this until it does not conduct. So now we see no conduction, so there's not enough ions there to create conduction. Okay, that was my cleaning solution. Last one we're going to test is the sugar water. So same concentration of sugar water. We put this thing in. Again, we get no conduction. Okay, so sugar, polar molecule, it does dissolve, but does not conduct electricity. Okay, so with everything equal, if you are a strong electrolyte, we will be strong conduction. If you're a weak electrolyte, you're going to weakly conduct. If you're a non-electrolyte, you're not going to conduct. Okay? So let's do one more little test with you guys here. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some more distilled water. So this is just distilled water. And again, we'll double check it to make sure that it's not going to conduct. All right. And now... I'm gonna add in a little salt, not much, just a little, just a little bit of salt. Very little salt I put in there. Stir it up. And let's see if that little bit of salt will cause it to conduct. Nope, not enough. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit more. Yeah, not very much, I put in maybe Probably less than a pinch of salt if I was a Martha Stewart and I'm doing a cooking thing, like, ooh, a little bit of salt. That's my Martha Stewart impressionation. You'll never hear that again, by the way. Okay, so we add a little bit more salt, and now we get conduction. So as I'm increasing the concentration, right, I put more salt in here, conduction goes up. So if I want to put a little more salt in, oh, kind of put a lot that time, okay. More salt, more concentration, more ions, more conduction, okay? Now we could keep doing that. The more and more concentrated I make this, the brighter the light bulb will go. 
Now the limit to that is called the solubility point or the saturation point. So at some point, I'd have put so much salt in here that it won't all dissolve. After that, I can put salt in here until my you know, face turns blue, but if it doesn't dissolve into ions, it won't conduct anymore. Okay? So one last little test. We have Kool-Aid, or basically artificially flavored caffeine-free cherry something from Cub Foods, and we have our good old friend Gatorade. Okay? So again, we're going to clean off my electrodes, and let's tell the difference. So is Gatorade really that big of a difference in terms of electrolytes? So here's my Kool-Aid. Okay, we get a little conduction, not much, but a little bit. And if we read our label, the label talks about ascorbic acid and citric acid, which are two weak acids, which would give us the impression that this probably would be a partial uh, conduction or partially ionizing. So we should get a weak conduction here. Gatorade, we put it in, and we get a stronger conduction. Okay, so this is more than just that. And if you read the labels on Gatorade, they have things on it like uh, sodium citrate, monopotassium phosphate, citric acid, salt. It actually has salt in it, um, direct, directly in it. Okay, so those are the extra ions in the Gatorade that it has. Okay, so it is a better electrolyte. It is a better drink to have. I'm not advertising Gatorade here. It is a better drink to have if you're working out and if your body is losing the electrolytes. It is not a good drink to have if you're sitting around watching TV because you're putting extra salt in your body. Your body does not need. Okay?